Hello, I'm Dr. Hannah Capon and I'm here to talk to you about detecting the early signs of arthritis. Now it's something that I'm very passionate about. and I run a online education resource for owners called Canine Arthritis Management because this disease is very, very common and it leads to suffering and it can also lead to early euthanasia. So it's really, really important that we all know more about it so that we can pick up on the early signs to give us more opportunity to positively influence it so that we can get your dog more years. So how do we pick up on this disease earlier? Well, first of all, we need to remember that the leading cause of arthritis in dogs is something called developmental joint disease, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, patella luxation, osteochondrosis, angular limb deformities, all of these things are actually common in the younger dog and they have a very strong genetic link. So there's certain breeds that are much, much more likely to have these problems. So if we know that that breed is very, very likely to have the problem, we need to have our ears pricked and be aware of it. So let me give you a couple of examples. If I saw that my pug was walking a little bit strange in the back end, or it maybe become a little bit difficult to pick up, or was seeming to be a little bit tetchy with other dogs, anything to make me think this is not right. I'd be thinking, well, pugs, very prone to hip dysplasia. Mm, I need to make sure I get that checked out. So looking at what your dog's breed is potentially predisposed to gives us the first step towards identifying this disease earlier. What is common is common. So that's the first step. Second step is looking at what they're telling us. And we have a tendency to believe that animals only show pain when they either yelp, cry, scream or limp. And that's actually just not true. So how do animals demonstrate pain, chronic pain to us? You have to divide it into four categories. You can see behaviour change. You can see changes in the posture, in the way that they stand. You can see changes in their physical appearance, such as changes in muscle, changes in coat, and you can see capability and gait changes. So let's just briefly touch on those. Behaviour change. Your dog may have been super, super friendly with everyone and now becomes a little bit distant, becomes a little bit intolerant, starts not liking next door's dog, starts not liking other dogs when on a lead starts getting a bit scared of loud noises. Change, behaviour change needs looking into. Posture, we all know if something's sore, you change the way you stand to try and minimise the discomfort. So if you had painful hips, you're more likely to throw your weight forward into your forelimbs if you were a dog. So if their posture changes, the way that they stand, the way that they sit, the way that they lay, if you think, never laid like that before and they're doing it all the time now or god he's st standing really odd and he's doing it all the time now that needs to be checked out physical changes if things are changing underneath because of postural change the surface is going to change too so you'll see changes in coat pattern you'll see changes in the way they wear down their nails you'll see changes in their pads so those are sort of things that you need to look out for too and finally, physical um, capability and gait changes. If your body is changing for the worst, you're not going to have the strength, the stamina, the power. So your gait will change. The way that you move will change to accommodate. So you might become slower. You might become stiff. You might become stilted. You might be more likely to stumble, trip, slip. But you also might become lame. Now, lameness is limping. It's when they're obviously offloading a limb. However, for you to be classically lame, you have to be lame on just one leg. And we know that arthritis isn't a disease that generally affects just one joint. A lot of the dogs that we see have arthritis in multiple joints. So they don't know where to put their weight. So seeing a classic limp is often not you'll see a change in the way that they move. It might be that they're stiff and short. It might be that they hunch up. It might be that their tail is dropped. It might be that they whisk with their back legs rather than striding out. 
They might hesitate as they try to get into the car. They might hesitate at the bottom steps. They might choose to do everything at speed because that's the only way they can actually do it. If you ask them to do anything slowly, they wobble, they stumble, they're less able. So looking for signs of pain is actually very, very subtle. Start with, is my dog predisposed? Do I need to have that thinking hat on? And then divide it into behavior change, postural change, physical changes, capability and gait changes. All right, see you then.